So I heard about this organic bedding company that's manufacturing mattresses right here in New Jersey, and they insist on doing it all by hand. So I'm really excited to meet with the owner of White Lotus Home, Marlon Pando. So Marlon, you own this place. I'm so excited I walked in. And now, what exactly is White Lotus Home? Well, White Lotus Home is an organic bedding company. We hand make everything right here in America. Actually, right in the back is where we hand make everything. You make everything here? <laughs> yes, we hand make everything right here. Why would you do that in this relatively small shop? It's not a big warehouse. It helps offer a product that is freshly made just for that client. And it works. How important is it to have a freshly made bed because it's not like produce. It doesn't go bad, you would think, right? A lot of our clients come from a background where they have some um, allergies, chemical sensitivities. It offers our customers something that is as chemical-free and GMO-free friendly as possible. What were you doing before you took over at White Lotus Home? Worked in corporate America for a handful of years. I got a job at White Lotus Home as a general manager. Oh. Now I'm proud to say about nine years later that we are in over 20 different states through other clients and customers. You're in so many stores and you're shipping nationwide, worldwide for that matter. How do you keep up with demand in this shop? The handful of products that we do know uh, move fast. We keep about a dozen of them in stock. Most of the products and fibers that we use from the fabrics to our cotton is all made here in the United States. So that gives us a nice little way to, to be able to turn things around rather fast. It's so important for this company to be made in America. Why is that? I came to this country when I was seven, so I was very little. And I remember the big excitement whenever one of my uncles or aunts came in, came back to Peru from America. It was like, we wanted anything that said made in the U.S. And I believe that's what uh, the world was, uh, was, was all about before. It was like, if it was made in the U.S., it's got to be the best. Um, and when coming to this country and growing up here, I saw the loss of that, how that was getting lost. And I think, you know, we're part of the American movement. How do you find, uh, like, the organic cotton? How do you make sure that it meets your standards? We actually have handpicked the, um, our vendors, and we visit them. How did you you make the transition from general manager to owner? The key was to work on the infrastructure. And I thought, what's the best way I can do this? I didn't have the funding. So I actually, you know, handmade everything with the crew. So I know how to hand make a mattress. I know how to deliver a, ma uh, a mattress and set up. So I did a little bit of everything. And from that learning experience, so what I did is I duplicated it, uh, well, first master and duplicate it. And then anyone that, that works for, for us here now, they'll start from there, from the silliest thing first. And then we gauge them and then we get them to do the things our way first, how we learn how, you know, what helps helped us get here. And then we'll let them go throw in their own little uh, extras that they know. And then it was after you took over as owner that, that it really started to expand and grow. What was the what was the turning point for you? What did you do differently? The turning point where I was able to let go and, and, and not um, be so 100% involved directly with the day-to-day -day activity. It allowed me to think outside the box and see what the rest of the world is doing out there and allow me to uh, hopefully copy or adapt some of those things that the, the, the rest of the industry was doing. But how do you maintain uh, the quality and the standards that you expect when you're opening up in new places? Since my sister came on board and she became the vice president of our company, uh, our next uh, biggest store that we're opening is in Miami, Florida. She's going to go there and be uh, in charge of it all together. And so, so the idea that we're sending uh, one of our pros. What are some of the things that, that you learned after taking over the business that, that most people wouldn't know about the world of bedding manufacturing? There were only one or two options. So you went organic cotton or regular cotton. Um, so what we did is we adapted, um, we brought in other fibers, other products like like uh, wool, um, this product called K-Pok, organic buckwheat, uh, natural latex, eco-friendly foam, even a foam that's made out of soy instead of being made out of petroleum. We needed to add new products. So now we feel like we have at least enough options to meet the majority of, of Americans. Now, how do you market a business like this? How do you get the word out about what you're doing? Small stores and get it, those people that love organic and made in the U.S. also to start telling each other. 
So it's, the, so it's that buzz is really what's helped us. And the idea of, of doing not just good work, but great customer service. 70% of my business now relies on word of mouth. Great, now I've seen this part of the showroom. Mm -hmm. I wanna see where it's actually made. Can we do that? Oh, are you sure you're ready for this? <laughs> I think so. Sure, you I mean you can see, but you're just gonna have to start just like everybody else at White Lotus. You're gonna have to help me hand make. So I'm gonna have to work. You're gonna have to get dirty. All right, well, let's do it. <laughs> All right, great. Coming up, Marlon puts me to work. He's working here. Now, as a businessman, does it really make sense to, to do it all yourself here locally as, in, as opposed to outsourcing? Well, it, it would kill the integrity of, of White Lotus Home if we outsource. And I noticed these small little pillows. What are these for? Are these for people's Barbie dolls? We are very green. We don't throw anything out. So when I started working here, I noticed that we ended up with a lot of scrap. Scrap fabric, scrap organic cotton. Instead of tossing it out, we, we created this little product. It's a way to upcycle what would normally be recycled. And we make these cute little pillows. But the key is that we, as you notice, we wrap them around these, these uh, things, which is actually our brochure. And what it does is it helps us get more of our brochures in people's homes. Awesome. All right, well, let's see more of the, uh, this, this masterpiece. So this is where we actually hand make all the mattresses and toppers and other beddings. So you weren't kidding, like literally making it right here at the shop. Yes. No, he's not wearing any shoes. What, why is that? You know, the idea to stay clean and natural and uh, eco-friendly is not to bring any germs into people's homes. So that's why MC, as you see, he's uh, he has no footwear, really. How many mattresses do you, sh do you ship out, let's say, a month? We're doing about 100 to 150 mattresses okay. a month. To make 150 mattresses, we would need a lot more of this stuff. So what we do is we keep it behind those walls. That so We have a lot more uh, fibers in stock, and we keep it there. And what we do is we keep here what they're going to do that week or that month or so. Gotcha. And I would imagine with that kind of volume, like managing your supply chain is probably very important. How do you do that? Well, we have an operation manager, and she's in constant contact with them. You know, uh, again, we, we've been around 35 years now, so we have a good idea of what are the five, six fibers that we like to keep in stock. And since they know us so well, if there's a drought or a problem, things like that, they're the ones that contact us and tell us, gives us a heads up. And what we do is we, we like to just keep, you know, three or six months worth of fibers and stuff in stock. But what's he making right here? He's making a wool topper right now. All right, he's doing a good job. Let's yeah. uh, let's see what else we got back here. All right, hey, see you, JC. So you weren't joking, you're really gonna put me to work, huh? What are we doing? Oh yes, we're putting you to work. Today you're going to stuff organic pillows. Go in front of this machine. Okay. What you have there is organic fabric and you have organic cotton. So basically... Stuff the, the cotton into the pillow. You got it. All right. How'd I do? Let's see here. I say don't quit your day job. Fine, I won't. All right. Let's get back to the tour then. If we continue to grow the way we are, uh, this space is right next to us, so we can actually produce twice as much of bedding right here. Well, thank you for the tour. It's been great getting to know you. Same here. Thank you for coming. All right, Appreciate I'll see you next time. All right, talk to you soon. Well, I've moved on from stuffing pillows to stamping pillows, and while I do that, here are just a few of the business tips I picked up from White Lotus Home that'll help your business rest easy. Number one, just-in-time manufacturing. To manage inventory and increase efficiency, create products only as needed by forecasting sales demand. Number two, vendor selection. When choosing a vendor, interview their clients and conduct a site visit to learn about their management approach before making your decision. Number three, opening additional locations. To expand your business nationally and maintain consistent management practices, send a manager to supervise the establishment of the new location. Thanks for watching New Jersey Means Business, your how-to guide for starting your own company. If you have a comment, idea, or business to share, send us a note at newjerseymeansbusiness at fios1news.com.